Savior, Jesus Christ. I'd like to start out this morning by saying compared to last week's attendance, our church attendance has tripled in just one week. So we need to continue that trend over the next couple of weeks. You'll bow your heads with me and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for all your loving kindness toward me. And I join with the psalmist in giving grateful thanks to you. For you are a good and tender, gentle and faithful, upright and true. I thank you for your daily mercies and rejoice for all the kindness you show towards me. I too give thanks with my whole heart and proclaim with my mouth, the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Thank you, Heavenly Father, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Before I go on to the welcome and announcements, I would like to invite David forward. David has something he'd like to bring to us this morning. And I've been <clears throat> hanging out. I have my devotion in early morning at 5 o'clock when I get up. Before I leave the house, I have a couple verses that I share with, want to share with you. And the cross. The cross in my pocket. Sometimes we have a cross around the neck. Very few have a cross in their pocket. And this poem, I've been giving out at Walmart, and I see a people walking by me and have a cross around their neck. So I gave them the, gave them the poem, I says, this is just as important as a cross around your neck. It's just a cross in your pocket that nobody has seen. And it goes like this, the cross the cross in my pocket, I carry a cross in my pocket, simple to remind to me of the fact that I am a Christian no matter where I be. This little cross is not a magic, nor is it a good luck charm. It is meant to protect me from every physical harm. It's not a identification for all the world to see. It's simply an understanding between my Savior and me. When I put my hand in my pocket to bring out a point of key, the cross is there to remind me of the price that he paid for me. It, it reminds me to be thankful for the blessing made by day and to strive to serve him better in all I do and say. It also a daily reminder of the peace and comfort I share with all who know my master and give themselves to his care. So I carry the cross in my pocket to remind no one but me that, that Jesus, the Lord and Master, is the only that you need. Another one is, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I would, with my righteous hand, I will guide you. Do not be anxious, another Isaiah 41 10. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything but prayer and partition to thanksgiving, present your request. To God. Philippians 4 and 6. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 3. And this is the greatest part of all. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and in that your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. 
and the last one of them all. Take the word of my mouth and the medication, medication, <clears throat> medication of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. How many of you know my wife, Pat Schreiner? Can I see the hands? Some of you don't know. Before she passed away, that's why I know she's in heaven. Before she passed away, she passed away at home. She looked at me and says, honey, I love you very, very much. And I love you forever. Can we say that German prayer together? And we said that German prayer. And she says, now, honey, I am going home to be with the Lord. Few minutes later, there was ten, two minutes after seven. She pointed out, honey, I said, well, honey, I love you very, very much. And I love you forever. Can we say that German prayer one more time? And that German prayer was like this. We the pretty kids who chase them on your old line soon. Father, I say, old line dying, you go mind the bigger son. I'll be doing right quite the time. See the flavor go to the town. Then it now be this is blue, not another child. Other child moves in for want. Quit rest room in dining hunt. Other hand she goes to buy. So we did the poor inside. So now I'm I am going home. And then the Lord closed her eyes. How important is Christ in your life? The Lord will take me home any time. I am ready. But it's His will, not my will, be done. Thank you for listening to me. And God bless you all. Amen. Show your attention to your bulletin for our announcements this morning. A uh, reminder that last Sunday of the month, you're encouraged to bring non-perishable items for community hope. Also, Operation Christmas Child uh, Collection has been extended. The collection of shoe boxes has been extended an additional week. If you'd still like to participate, pre please bring your shoe boxes to church by next Sunday, November 22nd. I know that that's especially important because not everybody has gotten their boxes in yet, including your pastor. So you can bring those in by next week. Uh, a thank you from Donna Heinrich. Uh, hi all, thank you for the lovely flowers and thoughts of Michael. He will be missed by many. Your expression of sympathy was touching and much appreciated. God bless, that's from Donna, that's in your bulletin. And you'll also see a long list of prayer needs in the prayer needs list this morning. Uh, so many people who can't be with us this morning, not necessarily because they're sick, but because they're on quarantine, because they've been in contact with people who have been sick, and that's why our numbers even this morning are lower than they usually are. Uh, also, you'll see that our, if you can mark your calendar, Sunday, December the 13th, Congregational Meeting Part 2, that is following the worship service, and there is also a reminder to check your mailboxes in the front and I want to make sure I get this right. Congratulations to the Laurel Locomotive High School football team for winning the state championship. Did I get that correct? Okay, so congratulations to them as well. Does anyone else have any other announcements before we continue on with our worship? At this time, I'd like to pay a special tribute to our veterans as we just celebrated Veterans Day. So I would like to ask all of our veterans from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and the uh, National Guard to please stand at this time so we may recognize you. We want to thank all of you for your service and for making us safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for all you sacrificed for our country. My call to worship this morning is an article by Joni Yoder. It reads, 
Twice in my life, I have broken one of my little toes by colliding with furniture. Ouch. For days, I limped painfully, my body protecting its tiny injured member. My body was doing exactly what it was designed to do. It supported and sympathized with the part of me that was hurting. Gradually, my toe healed, resuming its thankless task. Although I'll never again take my toes for granted, I sometimes take for granted certain members of the church. Paul taught that the church is the body of Christ. Not merely like the body of Christ, each member has God-given abilities to support and sympathize with other members. If Christ's church is to function the way God designed it, there are three things we dare not do. One, refuse to fellowship with others. Two, let fear and lack of love cause us to withhold our gifts from others. And three, disregard or oppose the gifts of others through pride and envy. Instead, we need to be actively using our spiritual gifts to the benefit of fellow members of Christ's body. Only when we experience both the giving and receiving of Christ's healing love for broken members will we be ready to reach out to a broken world. Now I'll invite you to remain seated and turn in your hymn book to page 513, please. <laughs>
morning. Psalms 136, 1-11. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give <clears throat> to give him alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote, smote Egypt in his firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. The word of our Lord. Now I'd like you to turn in your hymnal to page 404, please.
bless the reading of your word. Take it to the hearts and minds you would have it reach. And Father, I pray I get it right. In Jesus' precious and holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this morning I want to read to you from 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 17 through 25. This is from the King James Version. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him victory that your faith and hope might be in God. This week I want to start by talking about the King James Version. I thought I would teach a little bit before I get to all of the screaming and yelling. One of the reasons that I like to use the King James Version is I believe it is one of the most accurate English translations of its time. The problem that we encounter today is the fact that while God's Word does not change, our English has. You guys know I often use the World English Bible for comparison. It is very accurate and very modern English as well. But today we start with a phrase that we have all read or heard read in church, but we don't often think about the meaning. And if ye call on the Father. We have heard the old English word ye. Sometimes in old movies they're having a trial. They yell, hear ye, hear ye. And it is a word used often in the King James Version. When I hear that word, I don't know. It just kind of sounds biblical to me. But this word is a good one to use as an example of why you have to take your time in God's word. Study the words and phrases. Today, if we would write this in modern English, the NIV says, since you call on a father. The modern English version says, and if you address as father, and the Good, tra good News translation says, you call him father. So in modern English, they replace ye with the word you. But here is the difference, and I find it neat. Modern English is streamlined. It is fast-paced, and it incorporates other languages and slang to make it flow fast. So if I stand up here and say, I am talking to you as a group, you say he is talking to us. If I point and I say, I am talking to you, everyone understands I mean the individual. But when you see the word you written, like in the translations I read from, there is no pointing. The you could be a group or an individual and everyone who ever reads it. But in the Old English King James Version, ye was plural. So when you see the word ye, or like in the old movies, hear ye, hear ye, it's hear all, hear all. This is for everyone. If they wanted to point at an individual in Old Testament writing, they would have used the word thou. Today, we have slammed those two words together into the word you. So going forward, when you encounter that in Scripture, thou and ye, you have an understanding about who is being spoken to. The individual or all Christians or all of Israel before them. And if you're in a different translation and you see the word you, now you might want to investigate as to who 
the you is. Also, in a few verses, you will see them use the word you at the end which is where they would put it. If they had written thou at the beginning, it would have not ended with you. It would have ended with thee. Again, in modern terms, we take all those words and we cram them into the word you. I thought that was a great point in the scripture to point out something that I think is really cool. And I hope you're doing your own personal studies at home. And as that happens, those little differences I point out spur you on to look deeper and deeper into God's word. Moving on. Verse 17. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your search of sojourning here in fear. If you call on the Father, all of you, plural, and when we see the word call in Scripture, it means a prayer. When all of you pray to the Father, verse 17, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, what this is telling us is that God is going to judge us, every man and woman. That means we're not going to be judged as a group. Some churches believe that just being a member of their church clears your path to heaven not according to this god will judge each one individually according to their works uh-oh that is a slippery slope so i'm going to put on some skis and jump right in this scripture means that you can't pull one over on god because he knows your heart he knows your true intentions and he will judge each of us righteously Based on how we live. Not because how we live saves us, but because how we live proves we're saved in the first place. And I mean how we live biblically, not based on worldly good. According to my Bible, the best place for a junkie or an alcoholic or someone with other obstacles in their life, the best place they can be is in church seeking God Luke 530 but their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples saying who do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners and Jesus answering said unto them they that are whole need not a physician but they that are sick I came not to call the righteous but sinners unto repentance this is where sinners need to be here hearing the gospel working on their perfection like all the rest of us like we talked about last week what it means by everyone will be judged by their works is once again how we treat each other god doesn't want you to sit in your house and say oh i just love my neighbor that i have never met and don't talk to and wouldn't recognize if he walked past me at walmart I just love that neighbor. God wants you to be like the good Samaritan and not walk past the people in need. Thinking that someone should do something and being the person doing something are two different things. You cannot fool God. You, can, you also cannot do the works and think that it equals salvation. Please don't think that's what I'm saying because you can't. You can volunteer in every soup kitchen in buildings, and if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are not going to live forever. For the exact same reason, you cannot fool God. But the good works, the way we treat each other, must be genuine, and they are an expression of our salvation. The best example I have of this is old-fashioned. Back when I was a kid, I remember when people sent thank you cards. Someone got you a birthday gift, you would send a thank you card. Nowadays, with email and social media, that is a dying courtesy. But think of it this way. If you don't send the card, you still got the gift. The thank you card was not to earn the gift that you already had, it was a response to the generosity of another. The gift has been given. The way we treat each other is our thank you card to God. And when I say each other, I mean ye. 
not just Christians, all people, especially the ones who are lost in this world of sin. I don't have to agree with your politics, your religion, your lifestyle choices, or your pro football team, go Steelers, to treat others like human beings with dignity and respect. I also do not have to compromise what I know to be the truth from God's word to treat others with kindness and respect. Just a quick side note, where else but Christianity do you find that? Muslims read their scriptures that say, kill the infidels. Mormons who have non-Mormon family cannot have their weddings in the temple. Buddhists, who everyone think of as peaceful, have taken up arms and are killing Muslims as fast as they can. Only Christians are given the directive to love your neighbor as yourself, even if your neighbor is nothing like you are. Unfortunately, for us as Christians through the years, we too have fallen way short of how God wants us to live. Matthew chapter 5, verse 41 this is Jesus talking. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which in heaven, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. This is how we will be judged. Where we were we good to others? Did we love each other? John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. And we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. The gospel is about personal change. If you're not living a life of love for others, real simple solution, start. It's okay to realize you're not doing it at your best. The gospel is about change. And maybe the change in you or me or all of us starts today. Verse 17, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. That means now that you know God wants you to be good to others. Make sure and love others in a fearful way. The word fear in scripture means respect. And the sojourn means the days of your life. Live the days of your life with respect of God and what he wants from you. Like I often say, live a life like Jesus could part those clouds tomorrow. Because you know what? He just might. Could be later today. Could be any minute. Be fearful of that. Be aware and respectful of that. Verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. In this verse, I want to point out the word redeemed. We see it. We sing about it often. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And other awesome old songs allow us to proclaim our redemption. The word means something a little different today. We redeem a coupon. You have used it. Or you've turned it in for a discount. In scripture, when we see the word redeemed, it means bought back. You were a slave to sin. Satan owned you, and you were then redeemed. Jesus bought you back. So many people say, I don't want to be a Christian or go to church or hear about God. I want to do my own thing. And I hate to tell you, that isn't even possible because you're either a slave to sin or praise God, you are redeemed. And verse 18, not redeemed with corruptible things like we talked about a few weeks back, 
Our inheritance is uncorruptible. Silver and gold get spent. They can be stolen. They can be devalued. If De Beers, the diamond company, released all the diamonds they have in vaults and stored up at once, diamonds would be worthless. That's why they buy them and have for years, and they only release so many. It keeps the price high. This is saying the price of our redemption was high, not something like tradition or money or garments, as was the tradition then. The price for our redemption was high. Think about that for a moment. The price that Jesus paid for your redemption. I hate the show Pickers. Because these two guys go out and they rip people off and then brag about it as they're driving away. They find an antique toy and they're like, well, I could give you maybe $20 for that. And they buy it. And as they're driving away, they're like, woohoo, I can sell this for $2,000. I hate that. Buy it for $600. People understand markup. You don't have to rip people off. My point is, when it comes to the price, Jesus paid for the redemption of the world. The redemption of Jim Dawson. Jesus died for me. I have been bought back. Did he, did God, get a good deal? Am I worth the price he paid? The answer is no. God got the short end of the deal by a long shot. But he loved me so very much. That he sent his son to die for me. And if I accept that redemption, I have been bought back. And you know what? God thinks he got a real good deal in Jim Dawson. Not because I am awesome, but because he is. I have been bought back, verse 19, with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. With the precious blood of Christ. That is why we are good to others. That is why we seek to please God. We have been redeemed. And it's like if someone takes me out for a very expensive dinner, one that I could not afford and would have not gotten without them buying it, I always offer to leave the tip. Jesus paid the price that you could not. It is not too much to ask. That you drop a 20 on the table as a thank you. Guys, I apologize that I always use food as an illustration, but you work with what you know. <laughs> Verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Jesus was foreordained, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus always is and always was to be your Savior. And then the end of the verse, but was manifest in these last times for you. And the end is the word you. Like I said earlier, this is the you that is used at the end of ye. It means all. Jesus was manifest in these last times for all. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God, who would have all men to be saved, all. Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. And this last verse tells us that God did all this to draw us near to him. He made us to fellowship with and worship him. He gave us free will to choose to do sinful things. And then he sent his son to redeem us, to buy us back from our own sinful nature. God has a plan. He is working that plan. Put your faith and hope in him. And when it comes to the people around you, ask yourself, do you brighten up a room when you enter it? Or do you brighten up a room when you leave it? Verse 22, seeing you have purified your souls. The word sing here means the same as therefore. We have been talking about salvation, how salvation is found in Jesus Christ and how our response to being redeemed should be reflected in our daily lives and our daily walk with Christ. Perfection is unattainable, but we are to chase it nonetheless. Then we get to sing, or therefore, or because, works to 22, ye have purified 
your souls. The ye here being all Christians, all the people who have accepted Christ, have purified your souls. The word purified by definition is an awesome one. It means remove contaminants from. That is what God has done for us now. Not in eternal life, but now. That's what it means to be redeemed. We have purified our souls by accepting that Jesus is Lord. Jesus does the purifying, but it is based on our acceptance. And that is why it says, ye have purified, because it is that choice to accept Jesus that lets the purifying happen. I am sure that some of you had at least one kid that fought tooth and nail to avoid the bathtub. Maybe you were that kid. Some kids, you just have to dump shampoo on and then get them with the garden hose. God has run the bath. You can be clean of all your sins forever and ever and ever. But God is not going to fight you into that tub like a mother will. God will encourage you to be clean, but you will not be forced to be clean. That is the part you play in your purification. You accept Jesus. The choice is yours and yours alone. But when you make that choice to make Jesus the master of your life, you are purified. Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. What an awesome word, purified. We are purified, verse 22, in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Through the Spirit, we are given the power of purification. We are able to obey the truth. Guys, I'm going to stop there for this morning. I thank you all for listening to me. And now I encourage you to turn in your hymnal to page 571, please. 571.
time that we prepare for communion, I invite you to join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed, and then we will take a few moments and prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. Dear Father, I ask that you bless the bread and all who receive it. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. When Jesus had gathered together with his disciples in the upper room, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take, eat. with me once again. Dear Lord, I ask that you bless the cup and all who receive it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. After the bread, Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said, this is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins. Take, drink. bow your heads with me once again. Dear Lord, again, I thank you for today, for everyone gathered here together in your house. Lord, I ask that you bless each and every one of us throughout our day, throughout our week. Keep us safe. Keep us in your will. It's in Jesus' precious and holy name we ask it. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.